Hey everyone, welcome back to Space But Messier. My name is Tony, and today we're going to continue our Astronomy Masters program for YouTube. Now, as you can see, everything's a little empty. I'm currently moving the studio, so I have like no space stuff, but this is just one of those videos after taking a little bit of a break to focus on school, work, and family. So here we go, let's dive in. Today we're gonna to talk about constellations and the night sky. What does the universe look like from Earth? Shortly after sunset, as the daylight fades to darkness, the sky appears to slowly fill with stars. On clear, moonless nights far from city lights, more than 2,000 stars might be visible to your naked eye, along with, of course, that whitish band of light that we call the Milky Way, which we'll get to. As you look at the stars, your mind may group them into patterns that look like familiar shapes or objects. And if you observe the night sky night after night, year after year, you will recognize some patterns of stars because these patterns have not changed noticeably in the past few thousand years. Now, people of nearly every culture gave names to patterns they saw in the sky. Now, we usually refer to these patterns like Orion the Hunter and Leo the Lion as constellations, but it's not exactly right. A constellation is actually a region of the sky with a well-defined border. And the familiar patterns you know, like Orion and Leo, they, they simply help us locate the constellations. They live inside the constellation, but they are not the constellation. Now, the names and borders of the 88 official constellations, which I've included below, were chosen in 1928 by members of the International Astronomical Union, or the IAU. Most of the IAU members lived in Europe uh, or the United States, so they chose names familiar to the Western world, like eagle, giraffe, dove, and crow. Recognizing the patterns of just 20 or so constellations is enough to make the sky seem as familiar as your own neighborhood. And the best way to learn the constellations is to go out and view them. But it would definitely help if you visited like a planetarium or study some star charts or use the sky viewing apps as well. Now next, we'll look at what's called the celestial sphere. Now I have to say, this is kind of a touchy subject for me. For those of you who know me, uh, I, I don't really like certain conspiracy theories, which we're going to touch on, but just hold on here. Um, I'll start with the definition, and then I'll show you exactly what's happening here. Now, when you look up at the night sky, listen closely here, I promise, <laughs> it appears as if we live under a dome with lights of different brightnesses all around it. While that is not true, it's actually really useful for us to think of it as a spherical map so that we can map the sky and keep track of everything. In this concept, the map of the sky is called the celestial sphere. Now in reality, because the stars are so far away, we lack the depth of perception to be able to see the differences in their distance. This caused civilizations to believe that we live on a flat earth under a dome. But science and technology have progressed, we have sent men and cameras into space, and we have proven that that theory is false. That's all I'm going to say. Now on this celestial sphere though, there are four points to know as you are reading the map. The first one is the North Celestial Pole. This is the pole directly over Earth's North Pole. Then we have the South Celestial Pole, and it's the point directly over Earth's South Pole. Notice how I said over Earth's South Pole, because to people on the South Pole, it's overhead. It's not, uh, it's not below them, right? Third is the Celestial Equator, which is a projection of the Earth's equator into space, making a complete circle around the celestial sphere. And lastly, we have the ecliptic, which is the path the sun follows as it appears to circle around the celestial sphere once a year. Now it crosses the celestial equator at a 23 and a half degree angle because that's the tilt of Earth's axis. Now in this graphic you see here, we've got the north celestial pole at the top, the south celestial pole at the bottom, the celestial equator, which you can see just expands out from Earth's equator, and then the ecliptic is at an angle. So if you were to constantly view the sun and keep it in your sights, this is the path that it would make around Earth. And this is something we'll get to in another lesson, but basically the zodiac sign that you're born under is the sign that's behind the sun on the day you were born. So if you were born like in, in August, I think that's Leo the lion, that means that in August, Leo's not visible in the night sky, it's actually behind the sun. The sun is passing in front of Leo in August, and that's where those come from. But we'll do more on zodiacs later, trust me. <laughs> now the last major feature of the night sky that we hinted at earlier that we're going to focus on is the Milky Way. Now the Milky Way is the name for our galaxy that we live in, but it's also a feature in the night sky. It's that band of light that we call the Milky Way. It circles all the way around the celestial sphere. It passes uh, through more than a dozen galaxies. 
Now, it, it gets its name from a Greek myth about the goddess Hera who sprayed milk across the sky. In other parts of the world, our galaxy goes by other names, though. So in China, it's called the Silver River. In the Kalahari Desert in southern Africa, it's called the Backbone of Night. Kind of badass. Um, and the Milky Way in the night sky traces the galactic plane as it appears from our location from the Milky Way galaxy. So uh, think of it like this. Think of our galaxy is shaped like a thin pancake and it has like this bulge in the middle. So like a, like a Frisbee or pancake. And um, we are here on, on the galaxy pretty much. So when we look towards the center of the galaxy, we see like this thin like Frisbee type thing with a bulge in the middle, which you can kind of see. So we, we view the universe from our location a little more than halfway from the center. Um, and, you, and you have to remember, we live inside this pancake. So in all directions that we look along that galactic plane, we see the Milky Way. And we see many stars and we also see many interstellar clouds that make it up as well. Um, and that's why it makes a full circle around our sky. Now, like I said before, uh, there's a bulge in the middle. Now, it appears somewhat wider in this direction. And it's the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. Uh, because that's the direction that we're looking towards the galaxy's central bulge so if, if you ever want to know where the center of the galaxy is if you look towards sagittarius that's where you will find it eventually when your eyes adjust and you can collect more light um, and that's why when we want to study the distant universe we we don't look towards the milky way that's actually not a really good place to look at all we look up or we look down in relation to it because there's too many stars and clouds that block our view in fact if you go outside and you look up at the milky way or you see images of it the dark lanes that run down the center of the Milky Way, they contain the densest clouds, obscuring our view of stars behind them. And in most directions, these clouds prevent us of seeing more than a few thousand light years into the galaxy's disk. Now, I just said a few thousand light years. Our Milky Way galaxy is like a hundred thousand light years wide. So yeah, it doesn't allow us to see much in that direction. As a result, our galaxy, our own galaxy, has remained hidden from view until just the last few decades when new technologies allowed us to peer through these clouds by observing forms of light that are invisible to our eyes, like radio waves and infrared light and x-rays and things like that. So tonight, that's all we've got on constellations, the night sky, and the Milky Way. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I also thank you for bearing with me. Um, it's hard right now to post consistently, so... I know you guys really want these lessons and I really want to do them as well. So um, stay tuned. The goal is still to post two to three times a week starting now in October. Um, so we should have some more coming up. Um, but let me know what you want to hear. My goal is to do two lessons a week and one space industry news. But let me know what you guys want to hear. Right now I'm going to continue to go through my master's program as I'm learning it. Uh, so we're, we're doing a lot of this. I'm a little behind, but I'm going to catch up here soon. And um, that's what it's going to be for the next little while. So. Thank you so much for joining. I'm thrilled to have you along for this, and I'll see you guys next week. No, I'll see you Friday. Yeah, bye.